I don't think people in this country like to talk or think about it. Most people think of elder abuse as somebody uh, beating an older person. This is one of the most invisible crimes. It's very difficult for me because I'm very friendly and I think that that's why they took advantage of that. They'd always steal everything, whether it was money or, or jewelry. I think one of the things that we bump up against with elder abuse is um, shame, embarrassment, uh, capacity. There is elder abuse occurring in probably every zip code in the United States. Elder abuse is a dark mark on our humanity. We're all going to get old, and we're all going to be potential victims. We're so conscious of all kinds of human rights, and this is an extremely basic human right. Elder abuse is a national problem that's only going to get worse with the aging of the population. We need to have a systemic approach to this so that when our children or our children's children become senior citizens that they don't face the same abuse and neglect that our seniors face today. My aunt has always been the type of person that adapted to whatever was around her. Very, very strong woman and nothing much scares her very badly. She just adapts. I don't need nobody. She's the only one to take care of me. <laughs> My aunt's um, son, who is the grandson's father, actually was having some financial problems and needed to sell their home very quickly. Um, the mother had already died a couple years before. They moved in here, then he died, and the grandkids were left behind. Um, and then as they got older, things just got even more wilder with their involvement with things, drugs and such. So that even though we had seen a lot of things going on or a lot of activity, people in and out, we kept checking and she thought everything was still kind of fine. But one day my mom came home from visiting her and said, do you know that your aunt has a security door on her bedroom now? When we went to the house, we found that there was a metal security grate type door on her bedroom. So it was a very remarkable situation. Uh, we had spent hundreds, thousands of hours in the last um, three years here dealing with crime directly related with this house and kind of in concentric circles away from the house. They had informed me that the um, city of Hayward was looking to take her home, sell her home, put her in a rest home, and that that, in my opinion, would kill her. She wouldn't have her home, she wouldn't have her garden. So I came over, I asked her to come and have lunch with me so I could get her away from all the busyness that was here. And I told her, do you realize what's going on? And she was starting to realize what was and the potential of happening. And I asked her, can I help you, you know, if you allow me to? And she said, yes. So the very next opportunity we had to uh, do this problem housing abatement program called SMASH, uh, we brought it here. We found uh, Miss Bastion, the homeowner, um, we found her grandson, several people who were part of the local gang, some people that were on parole, and um, a bunch of people who were under the influence of heroin. Uh, it was really sad. We have so many cases where an elderly person is living in their own home, they own the home outright, and their children or their grandchildren or um, a caregiver slowly takes over and the elderly person becomes the prisoner in their own home. Elder mistreatment means to me, it means self-neglect where an elder is not able to take care of himself or herself, and it means neglect by others. A lot of times caregivers can speed up the process or even facilitate the process where an elder um, dies earlier than they would. When I look back on my dad's life, how interesting it was, the time I, I really treasure his stories, he's a Pearl Harbor survivor. He told me what Pearl Harbor was like being in the Navy. 
uh, that Sunday morning when they're at church and they see these planes flying over and they just thought it was a practice. And then, they, then he says to me, why were they practicing on Sunday? And of course, then all, everything just broke loose on Hawaii. And then later in life, after the war, he got a job with the Yellow Pages and ended up in sales, which he was very good at. And he was with the Yellow Pages for, gosh, 35 years. I don't think he ever missed a day. And this can happen to anybody, and I never thought it would certainly happen to me or my dad. Everything was going smooth. In October of 07, I hired her at 250 a month just to take him to the doctors or take him to the grocery store so he could buy food or whatever, and, and, and that type of thing. November comes. Now I'm getting all his financials. I get a credit card statement. A trip to Chicago for $485 on my dad's credit card. $1,350 for a 10 to percent down payment on a timeshare in Las Vegas. A ladies president Rolex watch. A diamond ring for $7,400. So now I'm going, wait a minute. So I, I go to my dad and I said, did you give her permission to use your credit card to book all these things? He was shocked and he said, no, I'd never do that. We went through a number of um, conversations and meetings regarding the case and eventually we then filed charges against the caregiver. He, he, he loses his own self-esteem, he's losing weight, he's, he's upset and crying all the time. His comment to me, because I'm old, she thinks I'm stupid. There's a, a real pattern to these type of cases. It, generally, the caregiver um, endears themselves to the uh, elder, um, whether it be a man or a woman, and uh, is able to then manipulate uh, the elder in a, in a fashion that uh, a lot of times the children are just almost amazed by. Your actions betrayed someone who generally loved and cared about you. You not only broke his spirit, you broke his heart. And she was a direct contribution to his death. I've seen cases of elder mistreatment where we're elders simply have died as a result of that. Just waking up in the morning and knowing that nothing bad is going to happen to you necessarily, um, it's a very basic thing. Yeah. I love my grands, the children, they make me happy. And I love to see them happy too. Since I retired now, and I help out my daughters with my grands, because I think with a grandmother, a good grandma, you have the love for them, you watch out for them. And that keeps me going. The abuse started when they took the children from my daughter and put them in foster care. And then my daughter had like a resentment towards me. She'd be very like violent, you know, always want to fight. And she always was threatening to kill me. And this last time I was going downtown with my granddaughter and my grandson to do a petition for custody, and I don't know how she found out I was going that morning, but as we were leaving my apartment to go on the elevator, she was coming out, and um, she tried to pull my granddaughter, and I was holding her, and she started fighting me. I felt real bad, because it was my daughter, and she didn't have to go that route. You don't expect that from your family members. I would never in a hundred years, if somebody would have told me in this lifetime that I would be facing this, I would have said no. I cried at night, and sometimes I wish I could just go away. Elder mistreatment means to me elder abuse or physical abuse and complete loss of dignity for an older person.
I think one important thing for us all to remember and to help people know and understand is just because people change, and maybe they're not as we knew them when they were our parents, and now they may not have all their faculties, that they haven't stopped existing as a person, and you don't have any right to pretend they don't exist and use their assets as if there's a better use for them than for them. He was a loan officer at the Bank of America. He had gone to a reunion in Lebanon, Tennessee, and had left, I would say, four or five days early. And he stopped at Las Vegas. <clears throat> And I think it was there that he met a woman in one of the casinos. And when he did come home, I realized that things had changed. I received a phone call uh, from Pat's nephew, mm -hmm. who had attended a lecture that I had given on financial elder abuse, and called and said that something is wrong. When Wilson was, uh, or had met Jamie, I think that uh, it was the beginning of Alzheimer's. I feel that she did take an advantage of his mental condition. In the course of the investigation, there surfaced 28 credit cards, 15 cell phones, there were 20 uh, stamps.com accounts that had been set up. It was very clear to us at the time that the Wilson Smith family was supporting some sort of illegal business operation. So that you know there was approximately $750,000 involved with this case. It is an open investigation with the FBI. When someone has abused you and taken your information, you basically feel at a, at a moment that there is nothing safe any longer. Elder mistreatment means financial exploitation where those take the money and resources of other people and use it for their own good. The seniors in our community are the people who have lived and seen this world before us. And they contributed to great things that we've all benefited from. They have stories to tell and they have wisdom to share. And they should be highlighted as one of the achievements of a community instead of kind of deposited as though they're residue. We have to do more for our elders. We have to step up to the plate and enact laws that can protect them. I don't think that anybody could walk into the homes of some of these abuse and neglected elders and not take up this charge. Imagine if someone you knew was a victim of elder abuse and you were in a position to support something that could stop them. I know there are a lot of bigger problems in this country, but I think elder abuse is one of them. <laughs>